So here's how I taste wine, which is a very different activity from drinking wine. Drinking wine, you just pour it back without a thought. Tasting wine, you've really got to have every sense at its height and notice and record what your senses are telling you. So I pour a, a little bit, and it doesn't have to be an awful lot, into my glass. Honestly, it could be as little as that. This is actually the dregs from a bottle we had the other night, and I know that there's some sediment lurking in there, so I'm being very cautious about the amount that I pour in. Um, what I'm looking for is, is the exact colour of a wine. Um, is it dark? Is it intense? Is it pale? And interestingly, as wines get older, um, they get browner, whether they're red or white. So what I'm, what I'm particularly looking at is not just what the middle of, what the colour of the middle of the, the wine, but at the rim. That's why I'm holding it against something white. I always have something white to hold the, the glass against. Um, and I can see here that it's an amazingly intense colour. Um, and then just at the rim, you can just make out a sort of very, very pale, orangey, browny rim. But this 1982 Chateau Langebarge, a very, very classic red Bordeaux, uh, is, is quite amazing how much colour it still has after all this time. I'm going to make a little note of the colour because um, I always do. And very important. And how clear the wine is. If it's a, a young wine, you want it to. You don't want it to be full of a haze, really. Um, or to be um, bubbling away and having a second fermentation inside it when it wasn't meant to. Um, then is the next step is the most important, which is smelling it. Because our noses are even more sensitive than our palates. You've only got to think about how you go off food completely when you've got a head cold and you can't smell anything. Um, so what I'm, I want to do is have one very concentrated sniff of this wine and I want to get as much smell, much aroma as possible, which means swirling it around like this to maximise the surface area of the wine, maximise its potential to release that aroma, which will then collect in the top of the glass. So let's see what we think. Mmm, now that, that is something special. It's kind of ethereal in a way because it's, it's a, bit, a bit of magic to have a wine as old as this, decades old and still chock full of fruit and have sort of smells of cedar wood. It was originally probably had some, it's Cabernet based, Cabernet Sauvignon based, so it will have in its youth had sort of strong blackcurrant is a kind of shorthand for the, the most obvious fruit that you smell in young Cabernet Sauvignon. But now, many, many more layers of sort of, of nuance, a sort of plumminess, um, a bit of something minerally, um, kind of graphite, something like that. Um, but it's mellow, you know, because it's, it's so old. Um, I'm sorry you can't share it, so I won't go on too much. But anyway, in a normal, in normal situation, I would sit down and I'd desperately try to come up with as many adjectives as possible to describe this wine. In the Oxford Companion, we have lots and lots of tasting terms, as well as exact description of the tasting process. Um, uh, and the language of wine, which is, is very interesting. Um, so I've got my no, I've got how to describe all the, the very, very complex messages that have been sent up my nose by this liquid. And the last thing I'm going to do is take a mouthful of it. And in my mouth, I'm not so much measuring the flavour of it, which is what I've done with the nose. I'm measuring its sort of its dimensions, its vital statistics. How sweet is it? How alcoholic is it? I know about alcohol by whether it leaves a kind of hot glow at the back of the palate. Um, how tannic is it? Does it really dry out the insides of my cheeks? You expect a young wine to be really quite tannic. I would be surprised if a 1982 were very tannic. Uh, tannin is the sort of same sort of thing that you taste in a cup of cold tea. 
and I'm looking at the balance of all those elements. And if they seem well balanced, then it's a sign of great quality in a wine. And then when I've had a mouthful, um, I'm going to spit it out because this is a professional tasting and the last thing I want is the alcohol. Obviously I wouldn't at the dinner table. Um, but after you have either spat out a wine or swallowed it, you want to measure how long it, the, it lasts in your mouth. And a great sign of quality is that a wine goes on and on and on even after you've swallowed or spat it out. Whereas really ordinary, very cheap commercial wine often has a lovely smell but once you've swallowed it, there's nothing left. It's just like, like water. So I will note all those things um, in my tasting note. So let's see. I can't resist smelling it again. Mm -hmm. Very classy. Mm. It's not remotely heavy. It's got a lovely light fresh quality to it too. All sorts of other topics that we touch on in the Oxford Companion are things like the order of tasting, how many wines someone can taste in one session, um, the whole physiology of the tasting process, um, questions like subjectivity, um, personal taste. The really fun bit is the communion between you and that.